Hey everybody, so I haven't done a video in a while and I just wanted to do a uh, broad market overview and just look at the charts here. So starting with SPY, the one thing I do want to notice is definitely, you know, we saw this volume pick up and that's when we started seeing uh, the sell-off happen. So here you can see this uh, volume profile was um, getting lower and lower and lower and finally when we started seeing volume pick up, that's when the selling happened. So we're going to introduce the moving averages here. And let's see actually what's going on. So one thing I do want to know is this trend line right here. So if you look at this trend line, it catches the bottom of this massive move, catches the bottom of this massive um, fall. It also catches the body of this shooting star candle, and it catches the um, rally that we just had. So notice that this trend line is also going to line up with the 200 day moving average. So if at any point we break underneath this um, trend line, but then we're likely going to fall underneath the 200 day average. And um, that's when we could see a little bit of pain. So when I'm looking at um, this move today that we had, we rejected the 100 day moving average. And um, we also uh, pretty much bounced off the 200 day moving average. So we're kind of wedged right in between here. As you can see, the 100 day moving average is 450.74. The 200 day moving average is 445.50. So we're kind of wedged right in between there. And we're going to see what happens with price action. So what we really want to pay attention to is where this falls. And if we have a rally back, does it make it above this um, prior high? Or does it go below? Because if we go below this prior high, we make a new high, or we make a lower high, then we could potentially make a lower low. And that's when the market starts getting a little bit ugly. So right now, it's a little bit too soon to say we're bearish or bullish based on the charts. Uh, we're just going to have to see. But I do think that we get significantly more bearish if we break underneath this uh, trend line, which will pretty much indicate that we're going to be below the 200-day moving average. And if at any point we break underneath the 50-day moving average, I think that uh, SPY gets a lot more bearish. So just kind of zooming out a bit. Oops, not that far. Let's go five years. So I know my chart looks a little bit messy, but when I zoom out and I'm looking at this, just look at the mo movement we had in 2020 to um, 2022, which is where we're at right now. And just look at this massive move compared to all these prior moves. I mean, the S&P 500 is definitely, I would say it's definitely rallied pretty hard in these last two years. So you got to take that into consideration that if we do sell off, you know, I think it's a pretty fair sell off because this market is definitely pretty hot right now. I mean, you're looking right here. This is the um, prior eye in 2020. We basically went up um, almost like 50% in a matter of two years. So, I mean, that's pretty crazy. Uh, I think we should expect uh, maybe in the few years coming or maybe even this year to give a lot of that back. So that's just uh, me looking at the SPY. Now I'm going to look at uh, QQQ. So I do want to point out um, now that this could be resistance line. And we do have a gap right here. Oh, I also forgot. Let me go back on SPY. So we actually had a gap here on SPY. So the other day when we fell, we left this gap hanging right here. And then we went and we filled that gap in these last two days. So these last two days, we filled that gap, we hit the 100 day, and then we rejected. So to me, that, that right now doesn't look too good. So we're gonna see where this goes. And now I'm gonna finally move back onto uh, QQQ. So looking at QQQ, um, we have this resistance trend line. And um, if we do have a gap up to fill this gap, you know, maybe we could overshoot a little bit and we could hit this trend line again, and then we'll reject. And I think that this uh, 100 day moving average will kind of play in line with this uh, trend line right here. So notice right now that the 100 day moving average is also crossing underneath the 200 day. So I do think that we could go back to fill this gap. Maybe we um, overshoot a little bit and then we reject. And we'll kind of see if that plays out. But I do think that this gap will get filled. And um, I also want to note 
that in the last few days, we went from the 100-day moving average to the 50-day moving average. So that's a pretty big move right there. I mean, we're looking at basically right here at around like 370 to down here at around 350. So we literally fell like uh, $20 in a matter of a few days. But you also have to think about this move right here that we had. We literally went from 317 all the way to 370. So that's pretty crazy. And um, right now the biggest resistance is looking like this 100 day moving average. And uh, we'll see if this support holds up, this 50 day moving average. So um, that's the big thing that I want to point out on um, the queues is that gap. And they were, we're basically at the 50 day moving average. We actually closed um, underneath it today. So we'll see if we close underneath it again on Monday. Now looking at IWM, IWM just dogged because you know you think that it breaks out and then it just goes and it traps more people. So yeah, let's just uh, take a look at this right here. So you can see once we um, broke above this, we had this um, rally right here, hard reject off the 100-day uh, moving average. And then you can see that we just sliced through and now we're underneath the 50-day moving average. So yeah, um, small caps just can't seem to catch a bid. And, you know, we look out a little bit. And essentially, we've been doing absolutely nothing for an entire year. And now, after the next year, now we're starting to sell off. So the one thing I do want to note with IWM is that I see these um, three trend lines right here. And um, you can see this top trend line. When we fell underneath this, that's when we really started cutting. And then uh, when we fell this, we had another cut. And now you can see that we're kind of moving along this trend line. So if we do lose this trend line, I think um, we could potentially go all the way down here maybe at like uh, 176. So definitely something to look out for. So um, if we ever lose this trend line right here, which I also think... Um, Maybe we want to pay attention to this 100-day uh, moving average on the weekly because it's, the recent price action seems to be following this as well. So let's just take a look at Apple. I mean, Apple still looks pretty darn bullish to me. I mean, we're basically at the 20-day moving average. I mean, it could sell off like a dollar, uh, dollar at 24 cents, and we'll basically be there. But Right now, I don't see anything um, crazy with Apple. Um, and I do want to point out that there is quite a distance between the 20-day and the 50-day. So if at any point we do fall underneath the 20-day, I do think that maybe we could take out this um, massive bar right here. And then we would have to fall underneath uh, 160, 162, 66-ish. So if we do fall below that at any point, and yeah, we could get back into this danger zone right here. And um, Oh, oops, I'm actually looking at the weekly. Okay, so this is pointing a different picture. So now we're on the yearly. So which is um, actually looking at day to day. So what I'm looking at right here is that, yeah, we're basically on the 20 day. So it just so happened to work out the same way. So yeah, we're on, um, we're like, uh, let's see. About like 49 cents away from the 20 day moving average. And you can see that the 20 day, the 50 day, and the 100 day are all kind of colluding right here. So if at any point we knife below all of these moving averages, that's going to be pretty darn bad. I mean, the 200 day moving average is all the way down here at 158.16. So things do get a little dangerous when you get all these moving averages kind of colliding right here because um, one, bad day could basically cut below all of these. So um, that is something to pay attention to. So um, I guess the lowest one out of all of these would be the 50 day. So watch out for 168.32. And under that, then I think that we have some room to fall. Now um, that gap that we saw on the queues, that was caused by Microsoft. You can see this gap right here. So if we go back up to fill this gap, uh, it'll be like 310. 
So that would be about a $13 move from where we are right now. And um, I get a feeling that that could be uh, filled. So right now we actually closed below the 50 day. So in a few days price action, we went from the 100 day moving average all the way to being below the 50 day. So if we zoom out a little bit, we can see that now we're underneath this uh, trend line. So I'm gonna take out the moving averages. So you can see this trend channel. Now we're below the trend channel. We were within the trend channel shortly and then we got rejected right here. And um, this could be a potential resistance line that's going to cause us trouble in the future. So if we do rally up again and we fill this gap, I think we could hit the top of this resistance line and then maybe we'll fade again. So uh, something to watch out for. Now uh, let's look at Google. If we look at Google, Google has done basically absolutely nothing um, since January here. But, you know, we could go all the way back to, um, I guess we could go all the way back to September and say that Google has basically done nothing. It's just been chopping back and forth. So yeah, this massive move here, massive move there. Yeah, um, just a lot of chop. So the one thing I do want to point out is that this could be a nice support line. You can see all these tests off this line. So if we do continue to sell off, you know, maybe we'll catch a bit here in the um, low 2600s. And then we'll see where we go from there. But I do also want to point out that um, there is a gap on Google right here at around um, 2.8. So uh, we'll see if that gets filled too. Maybe, maybe it gets filled on earnings and Google reports something great. Uh, who knows? But um, right now, it's just a bunch of chop. We introduced the moving day, uh, moving averages. We knifed below the 100-day uh, moving average and knifed below the 50-day moving average. So in just a matter of days, we basically knifed below all these moving averages here. So right now, not looking too good, but um, we'll see how that changes closer to earnings. XLF had a pretty good day. So you can see that um, the strength today was in the financials. If the financials didn't see strength today, SPY would be hurting a lot more than it is right now. So um, we got bank earnings coming up basically next week. I do want to point out this uh, trend here on XLF. So um, a while back, I was talking about this gap right here. You can see that um, it actually got filled yesterday. So we filled that gap and then some. And then now we rally back up. So the next question is, where is this next high going to be? Is it going to be a lower high? Because right now we have this high, we have a lower high, we have another lower high. Do we have another lower high after that? And if we do have another lower high, where could that potentially be? I'm thinking it's going to be um, right here around the 100 day moving average, which is going to be right along this trend line. So if we do have a lower high, I think it's, potentially going to be around 39. So that, that's just my number right there. But if we do to uh, go back and retest this resistance line, then you know it could go as high as um, 39.60 or something of that nature. So uh, we'll see how the financials play out next week. But I do think it makes sense that we rally a little bit right now, just going into bank earnings after this massive sell-off right here. And I also do want to point out, oh, I actually just noticed this. So um, we have a potential head and shoulders, an inverse head and shoulders. So this is the left shoulder. This is the head. This is the right shoulder. Maybe we could just blow past all of this and then make new highs. Who knows? But to me right now, this is, um, yeah, this is an IHS, inverse head and shoulders. Got the head, shoulder, shoulder. So if banks do report great um, numbers, then yeah, we could be making pretty substantial highs. Maybe we could make all-time highs, who knows? There's something to pay attention to next week. Let's look at XLE. Um, XLE is literally at all-time highs. So to me, this is just saying that something is going on in the economy 
And generally when uh, energy is this high, you know, it's not a good look. And you can see um, even broke past this old high in 2014. So yeah, we're literally all time highs. Basically all I have to say about the energy sector. And we look at gold, gold still looks pretty damn bullish. I mean, just look at this. We made that high and then we sold off massively. I mean, this was just kind of like a, it's like a crazy one-off day, you know? Sold off massively. Now we're back to reality. And um, if gold does decide to fall a little bit, you know, I think it could fall all the way down to maybe 175. But even at 175, I still think it looks pretty bullish. Now um, let's introduce the moving averages. Yeah, you can see we're above all moving averages. So to me, it still looks pretty damn bullish. And maybe we could even go as far as to fill this gap right here, back at 188. I mean, I do think it could be uh, possible. So uh, we'll see, but I do think um, significant resistance will come right around here at the top of this bar. So around 182.65. So we'll look out for that. If it breaks above this level, then yeah, I think it's definitely possible that, you know, we could see this gap being filled. Now, I do want to point out that today we saw the dis defensive sector really rally. So um, we saw um, VYM, which is the high dividend yield, which um, contains a lot of different stocks. So like um, J&J, &J. let's take a look at that. J&J &J did well today, you know, defensive. Um, Procter & Gamble, take a look at that. Procter & Gamble did well today. Just take a look at some REITs. Real, um, Realty Income. Realty Income did good today. Let's look at Coca-Cola. Yep, Coca-Cola did good today. So you can see all the defensive plays are doing well today, as well as the uh, banks. So definitely something to pay attention to. And, you know, in my personal opinion, now I could be totally wrong, you know, I'm wrong a lot. I'm, I'm not even gonna deny that. So my personal opinion, I'm just looking at the SPY and, you know, when I zoom out like this, you know, the SPY has definitely had a solid run these last two years. I happen to think it's very likely that we just move sideways for quite a while and we don't really make any significant progress in the markets. And then this, um, Massive rally comes right back to maybe uh, this longer term trend line. And then we eventually get back on track. So, you know, I think the markets could go sideways for quite a while. And, um, you know, it might be the best time to be selling covered calls and things of that nature. So that's just my two cents. I still think that uh, um, overall news is pretty bearish. Uh, the charts right now aren't really telling me we're too bearish or anything, but, you know, that could change pretty quick. I mean, May is generally a uh, month where you see a lot of selling at the start of May, just right after that earnings season happens. So uh, we'll see if that happens this year as well. And then, um, you know, if you're a little bit scared to get into the markets and, you know, you're thinking about when you should buy, you know, I would maybe look for opportunities in May. You know, look for opportunities in September, November, when we have like those, uh, the midterms going on. So there's a lot of buying opportunities, I think, that will eventually show themselves. But, you know, right now, I think it's best to just sit on your hands. Uh, just kind of see what the market does. We're kind of just digesting this massive move that we had recently. And, um, yeah, we'll see where this takes us. And um, hope this was helpful. Have a good one.